Is Sony about to release a camera with a backside illuminated stacked APS-C sensor? Details coming up, but first I encourage you to subscribe and choose all notifications so you're kept informed on the latest camera gear, news, and rumors. All right, so this rumor is coming in from Photo Rumors, and what they're saying is Sony's going to be releasing an APS-C censored camera for the ZV product line that's going to be borrowing the same BSI stack sensor technology found in the A9 and the A1. And that it's, again, going to be in the ZV product line, which is very, very interesting. Let's talk about the specifications, and then we can talk a little bit about the price for this beast of a camera. We don't have a lot of leaked specifications or specifications. We don't know that they're leaked. We don't even know if this rumor has been validated, but let's just go with it for now. It's supposed to be capable of doing 4K video at 24, 25, and 30 frames per second, but it's also capable of 50 and 60 frames per second. It can do all those resolutions and frame rates uncropped. That is pretty impressive. 4K, 60 frames per second uncropped, and it's going to have IBIS, so 5-axis IBIS, built into the camera as well. That's pretty impressive. Now we've all, I think most of us to this point, understand that if we're going to see something such as a BSI or BSI stacked sensor in a camera, well, it's not going to be cheap. These are pretty expensive cameras. And Canon just released a couple of cameras. They're not BSI and they're not stacked. And that's the R10 and the R7 at $979 and $1,499 US respectively. And these don't have a BSI stack sensor. From what we've seen, BSI stack sensors usually cost more than $2,000. The Fuji X-H2S, that has a BSI stack sensor. And look what that costs. What is it? Right around $2,499. It's not cheap. It's not cheap at all. And when we look at other BSI stack sensors, we can see one in the Canon EOS R3 at $5,999. We can see one in the Nikon Z9 at $5,496. BSI stacked censored cameras aren't cheap. They're very expensive. The ZV product line is generally an entry level. These are sub $1,000 cameras. The ZV E10 actually sells for around $698 right now at BNH Photo and Video. $698. So if one of these cameras in that product line gets a backside illuminated stacked sensor, I can't see how it's going to cost around $698. Sure, Sony could do this. Maybe they've figured out a way to mass produce BSI stack sensors and do it very economically and affordably. But I can't see this camera costing less than $1,000. And even costing less than $2,000, I think would be a bit of a stretch. I could possibly, possibly see it around $1,500. But what do you think? Does this rumor hold out? I'm, I don't know. I don't know. Photo Rumors hasn't really validated this. They, they don't say that it's coming from known and trusted sources. So I'm not really, I'm not willing to believe this one at this point. There's just too much up in the air to get a camera in the ZV product line that's BSI and stacked 4K up to 60 frames per second without a crop with IBIS. It just seems like a bit too much of an ask. Now we are expecting several cameras to be coming out from Sony this year, an A3 and an A5, and they're supposed to be entry level full frame mirrorless cameras. But again, one of them could be an APS-C. It's hard to say. We don't know a lot of what Sony's working on. The rumors that come out on Sony are, well, they're anything but accurate. And even the ones that we do get that talk to specific camera models, like we got for the A7S III, even right up until the announcement back in 2020, the specifications weren't that accurate. It was off by about, it even got the sensor wrong right up until the very last minute. So as far as this new camera being for the ZV product line, I'm not going to hold my breath on that. But we are supposed to see a couple of Sony cameras this year. As I mentioned, the A3 and the A5. But I thought those were supposed to be entry-level full-frame mirrorless cameras. The other cameras we're supposed to be getting from Sony is the A7R5 successor and the A9 Mark III. I'm really curious to see what those cameras are supposed to be like. But these cameras are supposed to be coming in the second half of this year. And usually what we get is right around the second week of September, once everyone's gone back to school and the world starts to settle down, to, I guess, a new normal after everybody goes back to school. From the second week of September, usually right up until the end of October, is usually when we get a series of camera announcements, all within that month and a half time frame. And that's when we're supposed to be getting the A9, the A9 Mark III, the A7R5. Uh, we might get an A3 or an A5, but there's a chance that we could get those announced throughout the summer. Since 2020, since the whole world's been tur turned upside down, what has happened is, 
we start to get camera announcements in the summer, whereas previously, most of the camera announcements happened from January leading up to the end of May, and then we could relax and take the summer off. Well, not so anymore. So I'm really interested in this rumor. What do you guys think? Do you, do you think that this is, do you really think that for the ZV product line, we can actually get a backside illuminated stack sensor or even just a backside illuminated sensor? I, I think that's a bit of a stretch. I'm, you know, it doesn't matter who puts out Sony rumors. They are, they're very hard to get validated from trusted and well-known sources. And Andreas at Sony Alpha Rumors will at least, when he puts out a rumor, will say whether it's coming from validated or well-known sources or not. This one doesn't, but if it doesn't say it, I wouldn't really attribute anything to it. So yeah, very, very interesting. But if you don't want to stay up to date on the latest news and rumors regarding cameras, especially this new backside illuminated stacked APS-C censored camera for the ZV product line that's capable of 4K up to 60 frames per second with IBIS, then go ahead and subscribe, but make sure you choose all notifications because by choosing all notifications, as soon as I publish a new video like this one, you'll get notified. So that way you can stay up to date on the latest camera news and rumors without you having to surf all the websites, Twitter feeds, and all that other jazz. That's it for now. Thank you so much for watching and have yourself a great week.